This is Let's Talk Big, the Big Read with Jane Berger and Jen Hazel. The Owens Community College Campus Read is taking place now and throughout the semester with the goal of bringing awareness of different perspectives through books. The Campus Read book is Carrie, a Memoir of Survival on Stolen Land, from 2020 recipient of the NEA Creative Writing Fellowship, Tony Jensen. It's a memoir in essays about gun violence, land, and indigenous women's lives. Now sharing passages, topics, and events related to the book, Carrie, a Memoir of Survival on Stolen Land, is Owens Community College Director of Library Services, Jane Berger, and Professor of English, Jen Hazel. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Hazel, and I have with me Jane Berger, and we're here to talk big. Jane, do you have a passage for us today? In the repeating cycle of the girl's childhood, not all strangers who come to live in the houses are women, made to smile and beg to mind the children. In the childhood, the stranger men visit. They to and fro. They have access to everything. Everything is theirs. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff in Chapter 9. If you want to start with any chapter and get a big bang, that would be the chapter to start with. So this is also where they were talking a little bit about human trafficking. The companies that send their men in to do fracking, it's in kind of rural and remote areas, and this is where indigenous folks live. Webster's Dictionary defines fracking as, I don't know, but here's what Jane Berger's definition of fracking is. So it's when companies come in and drill looking for oil, and it has been thought to really kind of wreck the environment, cause some minor earthquakes and such. If you want a better definition, I would refer to Webster's. So anyway, there are these men who just come into town for these good-paying jobs, and one of the perks, if you will, is that and I'm not quite sure how it's all arranged. It's it's not, you know, laid out in here. Somehow, these indigenous women become their playthings, their toys, if you will. So when she says everything is theirs, everything, she literally means the women are theirs for the taking. It's just heartbreaking to me. I didn't realize the statistics, and that's a homework assignment for all of you listeners to look that up, that the statistics for indigenous women who are trafficked is so much higher than non-indigenous women. And we already live in an area where human trafficking is yeah. very high. Yep. If you are not aware of that, please look that up and be aware. The Toledo area is super high with 75 and yep. people being At able to get run over. Yep. To the bridge into Canada is the reasoning for that, if you're not aware, but it's frightening. Gosh, how do you protect your girls? If you're in that position, you're powerless. As as a parent, as, as an adult woman whose children, these are like 12, 13, 14-year-old girls who are being offered up. How do you protect them? You just feel so powerless. I can't even... As you stated, Jane, that it is like these are girls. These aren't even yeah. women. And what is that saying? I mean, it's not okay even if it's women. No. Let me make sure I make that very clear. What is it we're saying? So not only is it the issue of that you are raping someone, you're also raping a child. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's just unthinkable. It, it And yet it happens. So it has to be thinkable. This is why we pick these themes. This is why we do this podcast. This is why we have these events is because it has to be thinkable. We have to talk about it. We need to make an awareness of it so that we can support these people who seem to be voiceless and we can stop this from happening. It is astounding to the fact that Nothing has really changed. We came in, we took the land from right. indigenous people. And now on top of that, we've decided that, and this was probably happening during that time too, oh, sure. like, but right. that, that it's still in some way, now it hasn't been enough that we've taken their land. We now have to take their bodies on top of that. Right. Or we still are because we've already have the land. Right, so. right. Well, right. We, we have the rights to everything. And that's what she said, yeah. everything. And that's interesting too, because Human trafficking of young girls in the Toledo area has really gotten some notice. Initiatives are, are have been put into place to to try to to stop um, this. But trafficking of indigenous women, 
you'll be hard pressed to find that anywhere on any of the news. And even as our student Carrie, who was with us a couple of weeks ago, even talked about, it's like even just finding information on missing and murdered Indigenous women is unheard of. Yep. And in the case that Carrie has talked about, they know. But nothing has been done. And that was in the 70s. Right. Just the fact that there's less value on some people's lives than on others is abhorrent to me. Uh, Just a couple of stats in this area to be aware of is the average age of victims is 13 years old. And Toledo is the fourth largest recruitment site for minor sex trafficking in the country. As the mom of three girls who are now adults, just the thought that, my gosh, any of that, it could have happened. Mm -hmm. Again, it is. Well, we are still, mine is. Yeah, she's she's little. Right, she's very little. She's a baby to even think about. And even now, as, like I said, my youngest just turned 25, and the thought that somebody could do that to her. You know, she's five feet, 100 pounds, so Mm -hmm. it wouldn't take much to overpower her. I mean, she's feisty, but it doesn't matter because Mm -hmm. they have ways. And this is not for a discussion now, but the whole drug and fentanyl and how they, you know, render these girls not only powerless, they're like little rag dolls because they're not even Mm -hmm. awake when they haul them off to wherever they, they land. And how many of them come out? Of it, how, how many of them do we find, and can say that this is a success? We have been able to recover um, these girls. I don't know that. I do know that I have someone I know who experienced human trafficking and is now passed. That, from my understanding, and from someone who had experienced it, I don't even have words. No. Like no, I can say no. horrific, but that's not strong no, enough no, of a word uh-uh. for that. Nope. I hate to have said all this and then end up I for know, the day. I'm, it's such a heavy note. Have a great day. <laughs> right. Um, as a wrap up, it's like, yay. But I think the importance is knowing the way Tony Jensen brings it out there. And as you said, Jane, like, why is there not value on this human life? And taking it back to what we experience every day, if you do live in the Toledo area, be aware. This is something to know. Yep. Please do be Just, aware. Yeah, be aware. And if you see something that looks odd, call the police. That'll do it for us today. On behalf of Jane Berger and myself, Jen Hazel, keep talking big. Catch Let's Talk Big on Outcast OCCR Owens Community College Radio every Thursday at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m. And at various times throughout the week. Or listen anytime on the Owens Outcom Plus YouTube channel. Let's talk big on the Owens Outcom Plus YouTube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. And join us again here for Let's Talk Big. The Big Read with Jane Berger and Jen Hazel. On the phone.